In this video, I demonstrate how to use the Heathkit DX20 transmitter with the Heathkit VF1 VFO. I've made another video on the Heathkit DX20 amateur transmitter. In that video, I operated using a crystal. A quartz crystal is a low-cost, stable, and accurate way to determine the frequency of a transmitter. At the time the DX20 transmitter was offered, it was common for beginning hams to use crystal control, and in fact in some countries such as the USA, the entry-level radio license at the time required the use of crystal control. The downside of crystal control is that you're limited to only the frequencies for which you have crystals. Changing crystals also typically takes a couple of minutes to change and retune the transmitter to the new frequency. For many hams who started off with a crystal control transmitter like the DX20, one of the first upgrades would be a variable frequency oscillator, or VFO, which allows changing frequency using a dial. The Heathkit VF1 VFO, which I've covered in another video, is one which worked with the DX20. Unlike with the earlier Heathkit AT1 transmitter, the VF1 VFO didn't work out of the box with the DX20. First, the VF1 needs an external power supply. While the AT1 transmitter provided the necessary voltages from an octal connector on the rear panel, the DX20 doesn't provide power. In fact, the power transformer for the DX20 is already stretched to the limit to power the transmitter itself, so you can't take any more power from it for the VFO. The best option is usually to build an external power supply to provide the necessary voltages, 6.3 volts AC, and 250 to 350 volts DC. I may do that at some point as a project, but for this demo my solution was to power the VF1 using my AT1 transmitter in order to use it with the DX20. A messy solution, but it works. To use a VFO, the DX20 transmitter needs a small modification. A jumper wire needs to be connected across the choke in the oscillator circuit. My DX20 originally had this modification made, so the previous owner must have been using it with a VFO. I undid the change in order to use a crystal. So for the purposes of the demo, I've temporarily made the connection again using some clip leads. Here's the setup for the demonstration. The VF1 VFO is connected to my AT1 transmitter in order to power it. The VF1 won't otherwise be used. A cable from the VFO connects to the crystal socket inside the DX20 transmitter. Note that the polarity is important making sure that the ground side of the cable goes to the ground side of the transmitter. I've also connected the DX20 transmitter to a dummy load via an SWR and power meter. Operation of the transmitter is much the same as with crystal control, however we have to first power on the VF1 VFO by powering on the AT1 transmitter, including turning the standby plate control to plate on. The backlight of the VFO confirms that we have power to it. The VFO is set to the desired band, in this case 40 meters, mode switch to on, and a frequency selected. Now we can tune up the DX20 as normal. I've also made a video showing just the tune-up procedure with crystal control. If we need to change frequency, we can simply turn the VFO dial. If tuning more than a short amount or if changing bands, we need to readjust the transmitter tuning. For full operation on the air like this, we would of course need a receiver. The other thing needed would be a TR transmit receive relay to switch the antenna between the transmitter and receiver. I have a suitable TR relay and hope to get the DX20 VF1 and one of my Heathkit receivers, like my HR-10B, on the air. For more details on the Heathkit DX20, VF1, AT1, and HR-10B, see the separate YouTube videos I've made for these units.